Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, a lawn care company in Northeast Florida, and you are hopefully watching the live stream. <laughs> if I set everything up right, uh, we are going to be streaming the Bobcat mower launch event, which looks to be happening in just about two minutes. Um, I'm going to check very quickly to make sure that I set this up right. If you're watching this uh, later on in the future, that was a really weird way to word that, but if you watch this later, I'll try and include timestamps uh, to the relevant information so you don't have to sit and watch the whole thing. You can look in the description, just click around where you want. Um, I, yeah, it looks like it's live, so I think we're okay there. And we've got about a minute and a half before it starts off, so I'm going to minimize myself so I don't block the... Uh, the feed and we should be able to see uh, the comments from the Bobcat stream and I'll try and pay attention to the comments on my stream as well. Hello Romero. Uh, Bayardo has a 42 inch riding mower. Why does it leave a streak of high grass? It takes me forever to cut. If you mean a streak in the middle, um, I don't know how many blades does it have. I'm not sure if 42s only have two real long 20-something inch blades, but uh, usually if there's a streak in the middle, it's either because those blades aren't sharp enough or you're going too fast. Um, generally, you have to slow down. I know that even with my uh, this demo Bobcat that I've got, the 48-inch, I had some very, very thick grass that I was just plowing through, and I left a little streak because it, it was just, I was going faster than I should have for, for that amount, but... Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the only thing I can think of, Bayardo. What does the future look like? Christian wants to know. I don't know. If I did, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'd have a leg up on everybody else, I guess. Um, and so what we're going to be doing, too, it looks like Bobcat Company is going to be starting this soon. I won't be talking while it's playing, but as I see questions come up, I'll probably pause their live video so that you know I can then talk and you won't have to hear two things going on at once. Looks like we've got 130 people waiting on the Bobcat channel. Uh, right now we've got... It's starting! Oh, I should have got some popcorn. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Ballweber, president of Doosan Bobcat North America. Today, we're giving you the first look at the newest addition to our Bobcat family, our all new zero turn mowers. I'll also try and uh, comment on the thing, uh, type in while he's talking, so that way I can still interact with you. For more than 60 years, Bobcat has been a leader in the compact equipment industry, and we continue to be a driving force, but we are always advancing innovations and pioneering new products and services. Given this, we know that expanding into the zero turn mowers is a perfect next step for us and our customers. Bobcat is introducing 21 models to the market and we're really excited to talk to you about why this is great news for you, your crew, and your turf. You may be asking why mowers, why now? At Bobcat, we are always looking towards what's next. What do our customers want and how can we deliver the right products, services, and solutions to help you succeed and accomplish more. Our goal is to offer a full suite of Bobcat products because we know you have a wide variety of jobs to do. This is why adding zero turn mowers to our product line made sense. And our current lineup of Bobcat equipment has a lot in common with zero turn mowers. Not only will our mowers deliver the same quality, performance, and reliability you trust from Bobcat equipment, they're also backed by an industry-leading commitment to the turf industry. He's got a nice polo. And like all of our Bobcat products, you can count on a vast network of more than a thousand dealers, multiple product offerings, and our best-in-class warranty. Bottom line, Bobcat will be your one-stop shop for all your equipment needs, and we are committed to delivering the best products and services and empowering you to accomplish more. Throughout this live stream, you'll be seeing the brand new lineup of Bobcat mowers hearing about product specs from our senior product manager, a Q&A session, and don't forget, we're also drawing our big winners at the end of the evening. This is something you're gonna to wanna to watch to the very end. We think you'll be impressed by what Bobcat has to offer. Now we have a special message to share with you from pro quarterback, Carson Wentz. 
What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bobcat Zero Turn Mower Live Watch Party. Uh, I'm your host, Carson Wentz. Just kidding, I'm not your host. Bad joke. But uh, I wish we could all be celebrating this night together, uh, having a good time. But uh, obviously, given the world we're living in, uh, we're going to be attending this thing virtually. So I'm virtually with you guys, just like everyone else is. Um, I've had this thing for a couple weeks now. Um, it's tough. It cuts through the tall stuff, the thick stuff, the short stuff. It, it does it all. Uh, my favorite thing is, just like Ricky Bobby, I like to go fast. And this thing does that. For a, for a mower, this thing can, can cover some ground and make it really efficient for me and all that I do so I can get back to, to everything I, I enjoy doing with my family and other projects. So uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to your actual host tonight, Kristen. Take it away. God bless you guys and have a great night. Thank you, Carson. And thank you all for joining us at our Bobcat Mower Launch Event. So the I am Kristen Kintermeyer, serving as I've your host demoing. tonight. I am our Director of middle. Promotional Marketing at Bobcat. And I am joined here tonight by our Senior Product Manager, Ron Scheffler. Ron, can you tell them a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Kristen. Appreciate the invite. I'm so excited to be here tonight showcasing our products. I've been in the industry for over 17 years, and I know great turf products when I see them. And these products are worthy of the Bobcat name. That's right. We take great pride in every product that bears the Bobcat name. And we also take great pride as a leading manufacturer of compact equipment industry. And these products are no exception, ready to be industry leading. Tonight, we are going to introduce you to three of our five brand new mower platforms in the studio. Ron's gonna take you through them one by one. But before we do that and get into all the details I know you're eager to hear about, why don't we see those mowers in action? In this industry, talk is cheap. But when it comes down to doing the work and towing the line, it's funny how talk never has much to say. Because in the end, it all comes down to just one thing, reputation. A reputation for outlasting, outperforming, outdoing, outmaneuvering. A reputation that comes with a commitment to engineering and innovation. One that's backed by a name. A name that stands for something. Something that's been earned. A title. One word. Tough. But you already knew that. Bobcat brings tough to turf. Talk about exciting. We love seeing those mowers in action. It's now time to get into the details. We know our operators work in the tightest situations and toughest conditions. And when we say we are bringing tough to turf, this is what we mean. This is our ZT7000, our biggest, baddest mower in our lineup. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of it with Ron, let's take a minute just to take a look at how good this mower looks. We've brought our white iron to this mower model. We have charcoal gray in our high wear areas on the deck. You can see our can't miss stitching a and Bobcat logo placed on the mower. If you work your way around the machine, you see the Bobcat orange wheels, as well as in the back, the can't miss iconic Bobcat orange tailgate. All right, Ron, can you My Bobcat tell us a little bit more about this model? So quick. Yeah, you bet. The ZT7000 is the top of the line commercial mower that we have, but we also have two other sit-down commercial lines, that's the ZT6000 and the ZT6100. All uh, have various uh, features that we'll be talking about here in the next couple minutes, but the deck range is between 52 inches and 72 inches in deck width. Now, we're in this business to make tall grass short, and we do that with our deep deck AirFX cutting system. That AirFX deck is a bullnose front end. That allows that grass to pop back up that much sooner and that blade to hit that grass. Underneath is the air gap baffle system plus our cast. So those air gap baffles he's talking about, um, like on my 36 inch quick cat, the baffle is one solid piece for both blades and goes all the way around. The air gap baffles are really nice. It keeps everything a lot cleaner because there's more places for grass to get thrown out. I like those uh, air gap baffles a lot. Cast iron spindle assemblies on the AirFX deck cutting system. Now, whoops. User experience was top of the list. 
all the controls that are here are up front, that was my streaming high, window. <laughs> able to read, able to use, nice, comfortable controls. The seat itself is extra high back with lower lumbar support, padded armrest with dual high density foam in the front for extra wear. And there's a weight dial seat adjustment. Folks, if you want a great ride, let's be real with ourselves. Time marches on, so don't put your high school weight in it. It comes with an LED light that's standard. All the controls are over a dual fuel tank system that is 15 gallons supported by three layers of rotomolded plastic for durability. This machine operates under a Hydrogear ZT5400 two-speed transmission. That second speed allows you to go up to 19 miles per hour. How's bad. that for efficiency? And folks, when you're in a cul-de-sac, keep an eye on your speed so you don't get a ticket. The machines have high horsepower engines. You have your choice of a Kawasaki FX1000 series or, Briggs or Briggs & Stratton Vanguard EFI 37 horsepower engine. And the 7000 series and 6100 come standard with a rotating bumper that opens all the way up for quick service and easy cleaning. And also come standard with a receivable hitch. Ron, thank you. That was great detail on the ZT7000. I heard you say we're in the business of making tall grass short, and I know the deck is critical to that. I heard you talk about the AirFX feature. Can you tell us a little bit more about the quality of cut that that will provide our commercial landscapers? Sure. So the deep deck design just gives you a full vacuum and lift for that grass to lift that straight up for a great cut. Um, the sharp blades allow you to have a nice crisp cut instead of tearing the grass blades. And the air gap baffles that are underneath, they're bolt-on so they're easily replaceable, but the gaps in between the baffles allow a greater airflow, which also gives you a great dispersion outside of the deck and a cleaner deck at the end of the day. So you spend more time cutting grass and less time cleaning up. We got the action music kicking in here. <laughs> So that adjustable front lip, what that's for, um, it, it's especially helpful down south where I'm at for taller grasses. So you adjust that front lip up, and I want to say it's maybe half, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Um, but especially for taller stuff like Bahia, it, it lets it, I don't even know how to explain it. It doesn't push it down as much, so it springs back up and gets cut a lot better. Next up is our ZS4000 stand-on model. We've already been getting a lot of buzz out there as we've seen uh, some YouTube videos preview this new model. Are they talking about me? Can you tell us a little bit more about it? You bet. So the <laughs> ZS4000 comes in four different deck sizes, ranging from 36 inches all the way up to 61 inches like you see here. The ZS4000 stand-on mower is one of the best kept secrets in the stand-on mower market. It comes with the deep deck air effects design, the bolt-on air gap baffles, and steel fabricated spindle assemblies for durability. The stand-on mower is nice and easy to operate. Comfortable controls, comfortable operation. Stand up on the anti-vibration <laughs> platform, lean into the rider pad, and get comfortable for an all-day comfortable use. The controls and everything is easy to use and operate. Everything's up front, out right where you need to be, easy to grab, ergonomic friendly. The operator platform also flips up, 
So you can use it as a nice, comfortable walk behind mower if needed. And it also allows you to be a little bit more compact on the trailers. The rider pad is also removable. It's tethered so you don't lose it, but it allows you clean, pure access to everything underneath that's inside the tower for ease of service. The transmission on the ZS4000 is the Hydragear ZT3400 transaxle. That's a 10cc pump. And it's an integrated pump and motor design. It's also powered by the Kawasaki FX series or FT EFI series engines. Wonderful. I would say it certainly does sound like the best kept secret of the mower industry. And it's compact size sounds really functional for our operators too. OK, so we had heard about the ZT7000. Now we're on the stand-on model. Why would an operator pick this one over a ride-on? Well, I'll tell you why I'll pick the stand-on over the ride-on. So one, actually there's a bunch of reasons. I feel more productive standing up than sitting. Um, I just feel better while I'm standing than sitting. It's easier for me to open gates, to pick up sticks, to move trash cans. It's a lot easier to just hop off of that platform than it is to get up out of the seat, walk off the... It's just a couple of seconds, but it's, it feels like a big deal. Uh, standers don't have blind spots, so when you're on a zero turn, if you're backing up, you can't see exactly where your mower is going because the engine's blocking your view. Standers don't have that. They are shorter uh, front to back, so they do a lot better on real narrow side yards. I've got some yards in neighborhoods where the side yard is maybe uh, 10 feet or less, so not a lot of space to turn around and, you know, you, you do a you do one turn, one pass, and you're almost in the neighbor's yard. So being a lot smaller helps with that. Uh, I think those are the main things for me. Um, but anyways, we'll see what this guy has to say. Mr. Scheffler. I shouldn't have said this guy. Rude. Sure. So a stand-on mower, not only is it more compact for fitting more units on a trailer, but it also allows you to be a little bit more nimble. It's great for highly landscaped areas where there's a lot of flower beds and other items. Uh, great for getting up on the medians quickly and it also allows you just to be able to duck down and be a little bit more flexible and get into areas where you might not be able to. That's excellent. Quick, agile, and versatile, what Bobcat's known for. Yeah, Very good. All right, let's see these mowers in action. And last but certainly not least in the studio with us tonight is the ZT3500 representing the 3000 platform mowers. Ron, can you tell us a little more? Yeah, you bet. So the ZT3500 is in the studio tonight, but also we have the ZT3000 and the ZT2000 series. All have similar components and features, and deck sizes range from 42 inches all the way up to 61 inch deck width. The ZT3500 has the Tough Deck Pro cutting system. That's a bullnose deck and a three gauge piece reinforcement in the front for impact resistance. Underneath the Tough Deck Pro cutting system is our double wave baffles, but also has six bolt professional grade spindle assembly. The foot plate up front gives you full access on all the products to your belt, spindle assemblies, everything you need to need for service and cleaning. The machine has a full mechanical suspension seat that's at three inch travel and a vertical adjustment. The controls are easy to get to up front and high, nice and easy to operate, and underneath is 7.8 gallon fuel system. Those are two roto molded three layer plastic tanks for durability. Large caster wheels in the front and large drive wheels in the back on all the platforms. And it's operated with the ZT3400 Hydragear Integrated Pump and Motor Transaxle. The engines of choice are the Kawasaki FX Professional Grade engines. And everything in the back is easy to get to for quick servicing. That's wonderful, Ron. We have the Tough Deck Pro, the suspension seat, and the Kawasaki engine. That's a whole lot of mower at a great price. And now for our last Mowers in Action video, let's see the 2000 platform and 3000 platform in action.
So some, there's a bunch of congrats on the chat. I think this chat is fully live. I'm actually a few minutes behind the broadcast, so I wonder if they, uh, if they just told who the winner was. All right, what a night we've had. Thank you, Ron, for taking us through all three of these platforms. You bet, it's been fun so far. Okay, are you ready? Let's do it. It's contest time. So I'm sure you all have been eagerly waiting to hear who our contest winners are tonight. So everybody who had registered within our deadline um, in the registration site was entered for a chance to win one of three great prize packages. One of which is actually our ZT3500. We also have a Carson Wentz signed football and prize package, as well as Bobcat gear for a third place winner. You ready to hear who the winners are? Yeah. All right, let's see who our winners are tonight. Junior Jeff and Joe. Congratulations to our three contest winners. Sorry, Ron, you didn't win this time around. I'm, I mean, there could be a lot of juniors, but I wanna say, that there was a junior that sent me an email. I'm going to have to double check because, uh, you know, I'm doing my own little giveaway for everybody who entered. I'm going to do that tomorrow because I'm still getting emails. But I wonder if that was the junior who wrote to me. If so, congratulations and a pat on my own back for telling Junior about it so he could win a mower. Okay, so we've wrapped uh, our walker <laughs> heard Somebody said, if your name doesn't start with J, you didn't win. <laughs> heard about our contest winners, but we're not quite done. We have had a lot of questions come in. <laughs> it lost in Iowa on my stream said the same thing. How come all the winners start with J? <laughs> during tonight's event. So I want to take just a few minutes to dig into some of those questions. So keep them coming. Okay, the first one is on warranty. Ooh, this is a good one. We've already had warranty come up a few times in some social media posts. I know this is yes. top of mind for our operators. Ron, can you tell us about the warranty? Sure, our warranty on all the products, no matter the platform, has a three-year duration. The hour limits are various depending on which product you get, but on all the commercial products, it's a 2,000 hour limit along with the three years. But it's a bumper to bumper inclusive warranty. Okay, so really good. So I'm gonna do a, a video in greater detail on the warranty um, because depending on how you use your mower, it could theoretically be a better warranty on the green mower or better warranty on the white mower. The very general, not specific, is that if you put less hours on your machine every year, the green mower with a six year warranty is gonna be better but if you're using that mower all the time and you're going to hit those hours, you know, quickly, then the white warranty is going to be better because even though it's a shorter year duration, from what I understand, it's a much more comprehensive warranty. Take all that with a grain of salt because I haven't actually seen the specifics yet, but that'll be an upcoming video because as they're trying to get rid of the green inventory, a lot of people are going to have the decision, do I buy a green Bobcat or one of the new white ones? The six-year warranties will follow those green mowers, and presumably the dealers will be pre given pretty good discounts on the green Bobcats. Uh, so there could be a lot of people where buying a green Bobcat is a better deal than buying a white Bobcat. And same way, depending on your usage, it may be better from a warranty standpoint for a white bobcat. So we'll talk about that in a future video. Good value on that one. And speaking of value, I have a question from Chris directly related to price. What are the price of these mowers? Mm -hmm. Pricing can be found on bobcat.com <laughs> with your starting app. Pricing. Russian collusion um, on but the, the pricing varies from the ZT2000, which is just around $4,500, all the way up. I'm going to get caught up on comments just a little bit. Um, Joe is asking, how's the zero turn on hills when mowing sideways? I think it has a lot to do with, with the width. So, and this isn't going to answer your question, but I've got the 36 inch quick cat and also this 48 demo. The 48 holds hills a lot better. I think mainly because it's wider and the tires are wider. The front casters as well are tremendously larger 
And with the 36, it, it seemed to, especially on like ponds that I maintain, there's an HOA that's got two ponds. That 36 wanted to just dip down with gravity. So the 48 does a lot better. Um, as far as zero turns, I don't know. I don't even know why I said all that because it didn't answer your question. It was basically just a waste of time, Joe. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. Darren's going to be a dealer. Very nice. Uh, anticlimactic video. I thought it was okay. Uh, maybe they used all their um, suspense on that uh, when they were showing the deck and they had that like action hero movie music going in the background. Uh, J Lustig 83 is the deck on the stand or the same as the other green Bobcats deck? They, from what I understand, they put that air effects deck on the new standards. The green standards, stand on mowers, did not have that air effects with the air gap baffles. I don't know what they had. Uh, I know my 36 had the Dura deck, and I think the white stand on model 36 inch still has a Dura deck. But the larger ones, from what I understand, they did not have the air effects, and now they do. So it's a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, L. Diegs, is this the first time Bobcat made a mower? I don't know. It's the first one I've ever heard of. Um, I think it's something they wanted to get into. From now, f from before now, I only ever knew them from heavy construction equipment and compact tractors, that kind of thing. <laughs> Vegeta, <laughs> Russian collusion. Fish Find 3000. They just showed the videos from the ads. They, they did a little more than that, but cut them some slack, Fish Find. Come on. Green Splatter, you're going to win anyway. <laughs> Green Splatter, somebody's going to win. It's just not going to be you. Or me, right? That's how it always is with these things. Uh, da, 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 da. Junior Rodriguez. I don't know. Was that you, Junior? There was a Junior. I can't even remember the last initial if it was Junior S or not. Uh, warranty geared towards prone. Yeah, so Justin, that is one thing I can say for sure, that if you are a uh, residential user, probably the green models are going to have a more favorable warranty because you're going to be someone who would much likely rather have the six years than, you know, because you're only going to be doing your yard with however many hours a week. So that's a good, uh, a good point. And again, I think most dealers are probably going to be discounting those green units so they can get them out. <clears throat> uh, Christensen family, I'm doing mine tomorrow. I've still got people who are uh, emailing, so I want to make sure I get everybody included. It'll be in the, the winner will be in the community tab. <clears throat> Uh, da, 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 I don't mow yards on farms. The deck is pretty neato. Uh, what mower should you get for your first time mowing? You're 14 years old. I would get the best that you can afford. Um, but if you have to start off with a brand new Walmart push mower, I wouldn't be ashamed of that. Just realize that uh, you can't take on quite the same yards as I can <laughs> without driving yourself crazy. But there's nothing wrong with starting off with very basic equipment and just realizing Okay, I can't do that yard because this equipment won't let me. Hey, Scott, there we go. Uh, Scott has been working with me with the demo unit that I've got. So the larger ZS4000s have the air effects, but not 36. So he was confirming that, that I think it's got the Dura deck, which is what I have now. And that's, it's still a good deck. I mean, you've seen three years worth of videos where it cuts really nice. The only thing is that I noticed that the 48 inch stays cleaner longer than the 36. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's some little air slots where it can, uh, where it can escape out. Christensen family, I'm going to do it tomorrow. My giveaway is going to be announced sometime tomorrow. I don't know when. Probably towards the evening time after I'm done with work. Kevin B. won the mower. Now, is that a second one? I think I'm behind now. Uh, Todd Barron's impressed with the stand-on. Todd, I really like the stand-on. Bobcat's colors do look good. Picking people for jury students. <laughs> Joe, yeah, I feel like that's how it is with me sometimes. Uh, 14 year old says, yeah, that's true. A 14 year old just starting out won't have the same operating cost. Uh, if a Bobcat had a 74 inch deck, I would say that's a bit redundant since they have a 72. I don't think they would do that for an extra two inches. All right. For a ZT7000 series, which is just up. over $13,000. Caught up, back okay. up. Perfect. Uh, we have a question from Sam related to the ZT7000. We talked about the ride quality. He asked, what's the suspension on the new mowers? Uh, the suspension is a full mechanical suspension seat on most of the products. That includes a three-inch vertical movement 
plus a lower lumbar support for all-day comfort. And there's also elastomeric vibration control material in the seat, on the seat pad itself, which is great for your hinder, kind of like a hinder hammock. Okay, huh? that's wonderful. I don't think anybody's going to say no to that. Hinder hammock? Okay, quick hitter. That must be a northern uh, Will there thing. be I've never a heard diesel mower available soon? Great question. As a product manager, always looking to see what new products we can add into the lineup. And yes, we are looking at a diesel mower, and does that diesel. truly fit both I wasn't uh, internationally I was and nationally for about all electric. customers? So we're That's taking a I'm look at that. In. Keep your eyes open, your ears open, and more information will be coming in the near future. Okay, great. All right, we have time for one more question. This one might be my favorite one of the night coming from Joe. He said, Ron, these mowers are awesome. Where can I get one? Well, I'd check out bobcat.com. Look at your uh, dealer locator, type in your zip code, your address, and call ahead to see which dealer has what product, because not all the dealers have the same products. Um, but products are rolling out now. They're becoming available, so check ahead first. Fantastic. Okay, so speaking of Bobcat.com, although we're almost out of time here tonight, we will have a direct link to Bobcat.com for all the more information you'll need. We've only talked about three of our 21 models tonight, so please do click that link to learn more. And in addition to that, Ron, are you up for uh, answering a few more questions in the I'll comments? I'll stick around. Yeah. Okay, great. Ron will stick around. Keep the questions coming in. And we really appreciate you joining us here tonight. Thank yeah. you, Ron. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, All everyone. All right. Have a good night. Is that it? That looks like it's it. I'm also looking at the... Uh, no, I don't want to autoplay. I'm also looking at the comments uh, from the, sorry, I can't, th I don't know why I'm trying to do two things at once. <laughs> I, think, I think people are talking about green versus yellow because somebody said, if you want a green one, go buy one. <laughs> the standard doesn't have the upgraded deck. But yeah, I think that the green ones could be good options for folks. There's nothing wrong with them. Um... Is my demo holding up? Yep. The demo, I like it a lot. I've been putting it through, I've only done a couple of yards that you guys have seen, but I've been putting it through the super tall stuff that I normally do, and it's it's been holding up really good and performing very well. Uh, Vegeta, I don't even know what you're talking about, man. I'm, I, my wife might watch this, so I'm going to uh, just pretend like I'm not reading any of your comments anymore. Jody, I appreciate the kind words very much. Uh, Judson, is a self propel Honda a good starter mower? I would think so. I've never used one, but I never hear anything bad about Honda mowers. <laughs> if a TV was mounted to a mower, that would be good. Hey, Ben, Acme Mowing Lawn Care. Acme Mowing Lawn Care.com. Acme Mowing Lawn Care. I can't remember that. There's three things. I only got two of them. Uh, well, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> hope you're doing well as well. I hope you're doing good as well. Man, I'm just butchering it. Scott's all right, so that is it. Well, I appreciate you letting me know, Scott. Um, Dora, I met I met Johnny with Blades of Grass at the uh, Kohler event back in February of 2020. Was it this year? No. No, it was last year. How could, it couldn't have been this year because that would have been right before COVID and it wasn't that. I don't know. I, yeah, I met him once. So I know of him. I don't know him very well. <laughs> I'm the worst at answering questions. Like I take eight minutes for a two-word answer. Uh, let's see, Braden, what kind of deck do you have and how many inches of a deck? Uh, so I've got a 36-inch Quick Cat with the Dura deck. And then I have the demo unit, which is a 48-inch AirFX deck. Let's see. I've never tried Skag. Actually, I lied. That I did do a 48-inch stand-on, which is their V-Ride 2. I didn't like it. There was something about the suspension that uh, it didn't float as nicely. It felt real clunky. And also, their kill switch is in their foot platform. And for me, as a solo guy, if I get stuck let's say 50-50, I can push myself out, but that's only with, you know, a kill switch in the handle. If the kill switch is on the platform, I can't step off of it to push because then the engine dies, right? So I don't like that uh, about the about the skag. 
Um, oh, the other thing too, I remember the, it was a demo unit that had 50, close to 50 hours on it. And I don't think they had ever changed the blades. Like I still have the blades, but they were almost flat. And um, gosh, it was horrible. So I had to go buy three new ones because on the first lawn, I'm like, this thing cuts like garbage. And then I realized that I had never checked the blades. Sure enough, I think they had ran 50 hours without sharpening. So I put new blades on and it cut beautifully after that. But taking the blades off was a nightmare. You've got, with a skag, you have to have a wrench up top and, and a gun down below or one way or the other. You can't just have a gun to, to unscrew a bolt. And I didn't like it. It was, uh, with the lift system I had, it was a pain in the butt. So, All right, Ben. Glad to hear everybody's well. Uh, chopping blades lawn care. Glad to hear it. Nothing wrong with that. Can I get one with a set of tracks? Javier wants a set of tracks on, uh, on, I guess, on one of the mowers. That would be pretty sweet. <laughs> Air conditioning does need to be an option on zero turn mowers. It might mean that we'd have to have like the FX 1000 or 10,000 engines on it. Do you still have time to send me the confirmation number? Do we still have time? Yeah, if you want to, go ahead. I'm not going to do it until tomorrow uh, at some point. So, Lawn Commander's on. How you doing? Uh, the one redneck conservative is 14, hopes to start a lawn care business in the future. Once he gets older, I guess I can make this bigger now that the video's done. Not that you necessarily want to see my bad skin and complexion, but it might make it easier to see. Would a PAS 2620 with the trimmer and edger do well if I only had a few yards? I really like the idea of a PAS 2620 because you don't have uh, multiple engines that aren't getting used. So if you went and you bought a stick edger and a stick string trimmer and a stick hedge trimmer, and uh, what else could you use? A stick articulating hedge trimmer. You know, you had a couple different things. That's four or five engines that you got to do maintenance on that could be sitting for a while. So with a PAS 2620, you've just got one power base that runs all those things. So I, I really like that idea. I think you can also end up getting everything cheaper as well uh, since, you know, the accessories are like, depending on what you get, you know, 70 to 150 bucks, something like that which is usually cheaper than buying the whole unit with an engine. String trimmer line, I use Echo Black Diamond. Um, that's uh, it, it cuts stuff really well. It burns itself up on hard surfaces super quickly. Vegeta, if it's a 36. <laughs> oh, you're on fire as always, Mr. Vegeta 420 Zid. Can't remember if I've seen you one of the... I've never tried a right stander. There's no dealer nearby. Um, I'm about an hour away from a major town, and that's where the dealers are, and I don't want to be that far away from a dealer. So, Let's see. I think we're almost getting caught up. Jody, I would give him a try if you've got dealer support in the area. You know, folks will ask me, what kind of mower should I get? And honestly, I don't know. You need to get... First and foremost, uh, something that you have local dealer support. Because with an investment that is that expensive, um, I mean, you can. I just don't think it's a good idea, in my opinion, w which is worth about as much as you paid for it, right? Nothing. Um, it's not a good idea to buy something from a dealer two hours away because they are never, and I'm speaking from experience because my first mower was a uh, Big Dog Alpha 36 inch. I bought that March 2017, and I think I got rid of it a couple a year or two ago. But that was my first 36 inch zero turn mower. But there was stuff that was going wrong with it, little things, and I'd call the dealer, and they were like, "I'm sorry, we really can't help you unless you bring it in." Which I mean makes sense, right? They can't diagnose stuff or repair it over the phone. But I wasn't going to drive an hour just because, you know, the steering levers had popped loose or something, you know, stuff like that. So uh, as long as you've got Wright, Husqvarna, and Bobcat close by, I would say those are good choices to demo. Yes, this is a swivel chair. <laughs> no, my lower body is just incredibly strong, and I'm just uh, uh, through sheer force of will. Uh, who you got, Casey or Houston I? Eric, I'm going to disappoint you. I know zero about sports. When I was younger, I used to watch uh, baseball with my dad. We were Atlanta Braves fans. I haven't watched baseball in so long, and I know 
zero about football or uh, basketball or Kansas City, Houston. That's got to be football, right? Kansas City Chief in Houston. Texans or Oilers? I don't know. I think when I used to watch Houston Texans, Houston, see, I don't even remember which one came first. I think the Oilers came first, and then they changed it to the Texans. I don't know. Yazoo Rider? No, I've never, uh, I've only ever seen them for sale on Craigslist as really old mowers. And I want to say they were even push behinds or walk behind push mowers, not ride ons. Do I know Stanley Dirt Monkey? No, I know of him, but I've never met him. Of a Spartan dealer. Yeah, Spartans look pretty beefy. Um, I like their color scheme and all that stuff. They don't have any standards and they don't have small mowers. So that's why I was never interested in them. I, <laughs> you're welcome, Jody. For some reason, because I guess because I've got a big ego, I, I read, I appreciate your words of wisdom. All you said was, I appreciate your words, but I, in my mind, I was like, oh, Jody, you're more than welcome to have my wisdom bestowed upon you. <laughs> uh, Glorious, thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that. I've never met a good deal. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say to that, Stacey. That might just be, uh, you, got, you probably have more knowledge and skill than any dealer you'll meet. That's why. For someone like me who doesn't know anything, I don't know a dealer who doesn't know anything from one who does, so, you know, that's fine with me. Uh, so Micah's Husqvarna demo didn't work very well. <clears throat> didn't cut good. Now, I know Johnny with Blades of Grass, he did just get a Husqvarna stand-on. I don't know if they gave him a demo or not, or uh, or if it's his to keep or not, but um, I asked him to, to show how to do the first oil change because I remember when Brian's Lawn Maintenance did like the very first video on those Husqvarna stand-ons, I want to say that was maybe, I feel like it was a winter time of either 2019 or of this year, uh, early 2020. But the engine looks horribly, horribly placed for engine oil changes. Like it's, it's in the middle uh, and it's all contained on all sides. So that's one thing I'd be interested to, to see is, and Micah, I don't know if you even had to do an oil change on, on your demo but uh all right we are all caught up with comments doesn't look like there's any new ones here on the bobcat company channel what i will do is refresh it so that we can go back everybody to, who had let's see who do we have who do we have where did it go here it is so yeah so we had junior s jeff d junior s jeff d and joe k and I was, I thought they were going to do, uh, I looked at the, uh, the rules and it said something about, uh, the choice between a ZS 4000 or a 6100, but I guess they changed that to the 3500, this one over here. Chase, hey, still, I wouldn't complain about getting any kind of mower, right? Micah, no, you're not, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're probably not going to be cutting grass at 20 miles an hour. That's mainly for transport speeds, right? Um, so if you've got the extra hundred dollars, I would get, okay, let me preface this. The question is, should I get the 770 or the 8010? If you're somewhere where you're going to be doing leaf cleanups, I would say even once or twice, get the 8010 because for that hundred dollars for however many four five, six years it runs for you, if you take care of it, it can move a lot more than the 770. If all you're doing is cutting weekly maintenance, you're not going to see a real big difference in performance between the 770 and the 8010. But uh, if you do any type of leaf cleanup or you know you move a whole lot of volume of stuff, I think the 8010 is worth that money. Yeah, XP, I'm sure you can do better stripes. I don't do stripes at all, so... Yeah, the 19 miles is just for transport. Now, I mean, you could physically cut, well, unless they've changed something and, like, the blades don't kick in when you press that pedal. But I don't think it would be the best quality of cut. Oh, that gets you with a 10K bro. Well, and I could have... Fish fine, you've got... I think you've got an axe to grind anyways. I've seen your comments pop up a few times. But like I said, hey, I... And I don't know if those are the price points or not of the, uh, the thing... But hey, I'm not going to turn down any mower. And I could have read the rules wrong too. But uh, put it on the trailer and transport. 
uh, vacuum pump oil extractor. No, I don't. I just, uh, oh, are you talking? You might have been talking about the Husqvarna thing. I don't. Uh, I just let it, the FX engines have those little drain hoses that I just open up. Toro or right? I haven't, try, I haven't tried either, so I don't know. Uh, I did want to see, no comments on the Bobcat thing. Oh, no, I wonder if the live chat doesn't show up for the uh, replay of the thing. Uh, it doesn't look like it did. I guess we've kind of got a little transcript of it on our video, though. All right, well, everyone, it was a lovely time spending with you. Uh, glad to see. I've got to double check to see if Junior is the one who emailed me because I'm going to feel so superior if one of my viewers won. Like I told you, I've got ego problems. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a good night.